everybody, this is Stephanie Janicek. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we are going to discuss symbolism in film, and film in particular, the film in particular is Star Wars. So, and also iconography, and how all of that is related to character, and what things actually mean in a movie that are symbolic, uh, costume, uh, items that people use in the movie that symbolizes who they are and where they're going. So let's get down to it. First off, we'll talk about Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber. Now, we know that Jedis make their own lightsabers and that the lightsabers are attached to them. And Anakin's saber is the equivalent of a kind of Excalibur. Now, after his battle with Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan took that lightsaber, he passed it on to Luke Skywalker. When Luke lost the lightsaber and the Empire Strikes Back, everybody thought it was lost, but it was found by Maz Kanata, or given to her, and passed on to Rey, and actually called out to Rey. So, the lightsaber is telling us a little bit about who Rey is, and that likely that she is a Skywalker, regardless of how many people touched the lightsaber, how many people were around that lightsaber. It is still the lightsaber Anakin Skywalker created, and it stays in his family and only in his family. So let's talk about another piece of iconography, the Millennium Falcon. No ship, I think, in science fiction holds more of our imagination than uh, this YT-class model freighter. It is part of Han Solo. It's, it's part of who he is. And when we see it, we think of Han Solo. And after his murder, it's passed on to Rey, too. Then we have these inter this interesting ring Leia's wearing. When we first see it, uh, it's in your face. It's, it's in your face. She's hugging Ray, it's in your face. What does it mean? We'll likely find out because it's in all the posters. And in The Last Jedi, Leia is also wearing your wedding ring. So let's talk about costume. Leia, when we first meet her, she's wearing a white dress, a virginal white, a very royal princessy kind of thing. And at the end of A New Hope, she is wearing a more of a... a sort of a, a slinky royal gown with, with jewels. Uh, it symbolizes who she is, but it also the color is white. Her uniform on half is snowsuit is white with her vest. And then, interesting phenomenon, uh, towards the end of The Empire Strikes Back, she slips into a red gown with a lavender sort of jacket. Now what does this mean? What happened going to Bespin? Lots of people theorize that it was a long trip, and she and Hans are consummated their relationship. There you go. She goes back into Virgil White at the end of The Empire Strikes Back, I think as a show of modesty and where she's at in her life as far as her relationship with Luke and Han. And they get to Return of the Jedi. She's wearing uh, this sort of costume uh, disguise as a bounty hunter named Bosch. She takes off her mask, and we realize who she is, uh, rescuing Han. And it gives you an idea that she's so sort of across a bridge where she can get down and dirty to do what she has to do to bring back the man that she loves. Now, here's the thing. We're going to talk about the slave girl costume. It's controversial. Jabba made her wear this to subjugate her. And it's not because Lucas is... Sexist. He wanted to show how Java felt about human women in general, well, females in general, and this one in particular. It's also a sign, if Han could see, that Han no longer had any control over this, that Leia belonged to Java, something that Han had belonged to Java. Now we've got Leia in her uh, Alliance uniform, Endor battle, and at the end of Return of the Jedi, the brown dress, she's come full circle, she's gone from virginal girl to woman. And then we have Force Awakens with her uniform, Nero's uniform, this uh, blue dress and tunic. And then what I consider a morning costume. Uh, and if we could see the whole picture, she's got both rings displayed. Now let's talk about Han Solo. Han Solo's uh, costume is... American Western inspired. The vest, the shirt, the gun rag, 
the black pants, the boots from the, A New Hope. Then return. Then the Empire Strikes Back, the dark jacket. Uh, very, very old west, very cowboyish. Uh, the only sort of depart departing is the snowsuit uh, jacket for Hoth, the Hoth scenes. Then back in Return of the Jedi, he's back to the vest and the shirt, the gun rig, the boots. Uh, basically, the Han that we knew, that we met. At least he's dressed that way. Um, then the dark jacket, it's made of leather, I think now, with uh, blaster packs in it. But usually when you see him in the red, in the black jacket, something bad's about to happen. Uh, Ray in her Luke Skywalker inspired desert. And then here is the thing from The Force Awakens that I love. This outfit, according to the designer, was inspired by Han Solo and specifically requested that it be inspired by Han. A vest, a white shirt, black trousers, boots, a gun rig. Why is she wearing that? We'll I have to see. So you have to understand is that when you're making a movie like Star Wars, there's mystical things going on. The characters are going through things, and what they wear, what they carry, means something. And what they have, the lightsaber, the falcon, the blasters, uh, it means something to the character, too. And this goes through, through the whole movies, uh, the whole movie, Anakin Skywalker's uh, uh, costumes, um, Padme's, you know, all of the characters go through uh, costume changes as their characters progress. And it, this is, and it, this is uh, it's more of a lesson in characterization and symbolism and iconography such as the lightsaber, the falcon, Han Solo's blaster, the DL-44, uh, the Jedi robes uh, are iconography. All of that are symbols of who the characters are and, and where they're going. The costumes are the character changes. So this is uh, something that is very interesting. It's how filmmakers create depth in a movie. It's how viewers are drawn in. What does this mean? What does that mean? Why is she wearing those rings? Why are they so prevalent? Um, and it gives you more of to see when you're watching the movie, not just the action, but details. And these are the details that make a movie a standout, that make a movie uh, worth seeing over and over again to pick everything out. Uh, it's, it's very difficult to make a big movie like a Star Wars movie. And when you start picking out the details, you realize how rich the story is, is how grandiose it is, and how hard the people that made the movie made it. And just what you're really watching, because everything means something. Everything has a reason for being in the movie. Everything has a story to tell. From Anakin's lightsaber, saying who Rey is, to the Millennium Falcon, to Han Solo's blaster. This is Steph, signing out. See you around the galaxy.